hello everyone so welcome back to this video so in this video we will going to learn about how to connect authorization server with the database so basically in this video we will going to use the actual uh, database and we will going to persist our authorizations complete flow and even we will going to learn how to persist the sessions also so this video from this perspective will going to be very very interesting so for database uh, i will going to use the post gray so it's up to you whatever database you want to use you are free to do that because i will going to use the flyway migration so it will going to be very very easy to apply the migration so let's start with the video so before starting this video i will uh, if you are uh, if you are not aware about the authorization servers and you open if you open this video so i really encourage you to if possible so please uh, watch my previous video in that video i have explained everything whatever you are seeing on the screen so we have completed one authorization servers i will also going to put that link in description so you are free to just check out and you can follow with me in this video also so let's start so for this uh, postgre is really very easy if you have a docker install then you can start with the docker also and in case you don't have a docker then you can just uh, install postgre and you can just spin up postgre instance so i will going to use the postgre uh, with the docker so let's start so as you can see on my screen i already wrote this uh, script uh, run script so here i will going to use this some this is just the name of my containers and after that this is environment variable for the password i will going to use the password is test and here this is main important uh, step so you need to expose your internal port to the uh, uh, external port so basically what is it so inside in your uh, container your postgre service will going to listen on this 5432 so you need to map this port from external so that when i when i when we going to connect from your uh, machines basically like a macbook or window whatever you are using so we uh, this port will be going to be available for us and this port external port will going to uh, redirect the traffic for the postgre yes and hyphen d is just uh, used for to start this docker contain containers as a daemon process so basically i don't want to see all inputs what was going on postgre i just want to spin up and forward so i don't want to see all the logs and everything whatever is going to be happen so let's pick this the intention of this video is not to cover postgre basically but i am explaining this so here as we can see we have started this postgre so let's do one thing so let's go inside this postgre instance i will going to you show you some uh, uh, cm uh, cmd uh, command line because i will going to use ps sql so let's do one thing docker exec if you are new for the exec command so basically here i will going to run uh, exec i am just uh, hyphen it is like uh, input so basically i will going to uh, open my bash comma uh, bash commands or maybe sshs commands inside that docker docker container so basically you can just think it, think this step like a sss doing to the docker so here we need to pass the docker instance and after that you need to type the command bash so when i run this here you can just notice now we are inside this docker container why i why i why i need to uh, move inside this docker container because here i here if you see i have this ps sql command is available so with this ps sql commands i will able to interact with my docker uh, sorry postgre uh, instance so let's do that ps sql hyphen h and here you need to pass localhost and hyphen u sorry hyphen u and here our username is also postgre so let's enter so now if you see we are inside a docker sorry postgre so now here if i run this slash dt so it will going to uh, open up all the relation whatever we have so if i run this slash l it will going to display all the database we have currently so let's create a one database create database and we will going to name this as test tv 
और बीबी और डीबी सो आवर डेटा बेस इज क्रिएटेड एंड वी कैन सी दिस सो हेयर वी हैव दिस डेटा बेस सो नाउ लेट सेलेक्ट दिस डेटा बेस सो फॉर सेलेक्टिंग स्लैश सी एंड हेयर यू नीड टू पास द नेम ऑफ दैट डेटा बेस सो नाउ वी हैव कनेक्टेड विद दिस डेटा बेस एंड इफ आई डिस्प्ले ऑल द tables which is present inside this database so here you can see there is no table so slash dt command to display all the tables so now let's move this is all you need to do for the post gray so now let's move to your actual code so here first things we will going to start with uh, registers client repository so in previous lectures we have learned about uh, registers client repository whenever we need to register our client to the authorization servers so there is a dedicated table so that table has a responsibility related to handling about uh, client so that table will going to store all the informations related to the client so if i show you so here you can see that so this is our uh, config related to registers client repository so in previous lectures we use in memory so now we will going to store this in database so how we will going to do that so if you open this uh, registers client so here you can see that so we have two uh, implementation for this interface one is in memory registers client we, that we have already used and this is for jdbc where, when we want to store this all information in our database so this is the this is the client repository we will going to use and one more things also so let's go in class path and so if you see inside this class path so it is inside the authorization server so inside authorization server you need to come inside the client so here you can see that this is the sql file this sql file is provided by the authorization server this sql file is already present in the class file so we can use these sql files for creating a uh, for creating uh, uh, registers clients tables so in that table we can store our all the information this is very very easy so let's grab this class file so now we need to let's collapse this yeah so now uh, let's move here so here i will going to use the flyway for applying the migration so it's very very easy if you are new to about a uh, flyway so here you need to create a db inside the db we need to create a uh, one directory name, name name should be match with the migration so please make sure we need to create a uh, one folder db inside this db i need to create a migration folder so once you create this so inside this we can create our migration so the naming convention of migration we need to follow so we will going to use like a version like a v1 so this is the naming convention first we need to use the version after that two time underscore underscore after that we can we can write the name of this migration actually what we are going to do this so inside this i will going to create a create registered client dot sql file i just wrote in caps file yeah so in this file we will going to use the create registers client table if you want to add this table also let's do that so yeah so now what will happen so when we going to add the flyway dependency in our project so flyway will going to look into this uh, this path and it will going to pick this migration and it will going to apply on the uh, whatever the instance we are running against so when flyway pick this so basically flyway will going to create a one tables in that tables flyway just uh, just uh, keep noting all the migrations related information so now we need to apply the fly flyway, uh, flyway dependency so let's do that so let's open build.gradle so inside this uh, build.gradle let's uh, implement so org dot flyway db sorry it's flyway db and flyway i think hyphen core yeah this is all so let's refresh our dependency yes so now 
everything this file will go uh, this dependency will going to do this we just need to follow the convention the convention is i already explained so we need to start with the version b so it will going to apply the version so in the next time when we going to create the new file so please make sure the next version should be greater than this version so if you don't follow this uh, pattern then it will not going to be work as expected so now we have created this so in this file we need to just grab this and paste it here so this is our uh, uh, registers client definition for the table so now we are done with the tables so here we need to apply uh, our uh, connections to postgre instance which we already started so now let's do that so let's define data source so inside this data source i need to define the url so let's define jdbc colon and we will going to use postgre in case of h2 here you need to define the h2 after that colon slash slash and here we need to define the host so our host is localhost after that we need to define a port so 5432 our uh, postgre is listening so after that we need to define a database so i just let me check so this is our database which we created so paste it here and after defining the url we need to define the user so in our case our user is postgre and we need to define a password and password is test so if you are wondering from this password is coming so if you recall when we run docker run commands at that time we set the environment variable and after that we need to define a platform platform is postgre and after that we can define a hikari so in this uh, hikari we have uh, one field like a connections test query so basically when we going to start our application so hikari will going to run this uh, test uh, query if this test query successfully completed it means our connection is uh, healthy with database if there is any issue then this query will going to fe fe fail so basically it's very good for ensuring uh, our connection is working as expected after that we can define a jpa uh, string so here again let's define a database so we will going to use a postgre I think yes post crash equal so one thing is very interesting here you need to type this as a in a capitals and here it is uh, it is in small so after post gray let's uh, let's also add this hyphen show sequel so basically in debugging it will going to show all the sequel files and also generated uh, these file these uh, string these uh, uh, config will not going to apply immediately so like a generated dl and all these things because i am not using any entity for now and there is another one also hibernate uh, uh, ddl auto check i think yeah ddl auto and here we i need to define a validated so i will explain you this is very very important so basically what will happen so if you aware about uh, spring boot so how spring boot uh, basically work especially like a jpa so we have a jpa entities so when we start our application those entity will can create also all the tables and everything whatever schema we have so in this case we don't want to do that we will going to handle everything from flyway migrations and here as part of spin, uh, when, when we going to start our application as part of jpa visions we just wants to validate whatever entity we have created it is aligned with our uh, definition whatever we have uh, defined in flyway if it is aligned then it's good if it is not aligned it will going to fail at the runtime so it will help us to know the regions so for now i will not going to create but later point of a time we will going to create uh, some entity also moving forward so this is all i need to do so now let's start our application so hopefully it will going to be work okay so application is started so what will happen actually when we start the application so our flyway will going to look into the database inside 
inside this database flyway will going to look for this table slash dt i think it didn't work so let's see the log maybe there is some issue with logs okay just one minute sorry so basically i just forgot to add one more dependency so i just added a uh, flyway i also need to add a uh, postgre uh, drivers and also a uh, spring starter jdbc also so let's add those very quickly okay so it will going to be org spring framework group inside this group we have a uh, spring boot i think spring boot starter jpa sorry jdbc and after that we also need a dependency for uh, post gray also so basically this is what uh, like a wrapper spring uh, spring boot will going to be used so internally this jdbc need a post gray here we are using a post gray dialect so it will going to use that post gray dependency for this we need a post gray in case you decided to go with a mysql msql server then you need to add here mysql's dependency according to the database okay so here org post gray sequels and post gray sequel i hope i all spelling is correct so let's start so now let's start sorry now refresh and start Fail to configure a data source. No embedded data source could be configured. Region fail to determine switchable driver class. Why? What's happened? This org dot. Let me check. Post. I think dependency is correct. So let's see here. So Post create. Oh, sorry. It should be post create sequels localhost. Now let's start. Okay. So now it's working. So please make sure uh, I did uh, spelling mistakes uh, in uh, build gradles, and here it's a. Uh, I forgot to add a sequel. So please correct this. So now our application is started. So now let's see in this database. So let me clear it slash dt so here if you see we have a two tables so first is a flyway schema so let's see what we have inside this file so if you see so this is the this is the table which is created by the flyway so basically flyway will going to use this tables to check what versions uh, is already applied and also for every uh, related to every version it will going to create a some checksum so when we if we change anything uh, a file which is already applied so checksum will not going to be validate it will going to throw the exceptions at the runtime so please make sure when you apply the version so please make sure not to change that after that you need to create the new file in case you you are in a development your application is not running on production you want to do that change then you can just drop that uh, record from this tables and after that you can just uh, reapply your changes so this is the second table so now let's see do we have anything in this table so this is table got created but it is not linked with our authorization server so now let now let's link this so let's start it's, it will very very easy so now let we need to stop this server so open your uh, security config so now i need this complete let's cut it 
so from here instead of this uh, instead of this i need to use the jdbc client repository so if i go inside this jdbc client repository it's uh, here i need to provide jdbc operations so now let's include this J jdbc i think templates will find so here i can pass this jdbc template so this is all so our client uh, uh, our jdbc all the implementation is plugged in so i need to create a one client so what i will going to do so inside this config so let's create a new file in it data so basically this is just for the testing purpose in actuals environment you will not going to need this type of a file so here i will going to create a uh, one function so with the help of this function i will going to just uh, inject some data when our application will start so here let's paste it so for adding this clients i need a registers client repository so let's inject this so here i can inject this register client sorry registers clients repository dot shape this is our client so basically whenever i will going to start my application so this application runner will going to be run so i need to make sure so if i start like a 10 time it will going to insert 10 time so before uh, before saving this uh, to our tables i need to check uh, if it is exist then please skip no need to add this so there is already a function find by client here i need to provide if it is null then here i need to add it so this is my client id so let's paste it here so i think we can use in a better way so objects dot is null and here we can pass so this is all so now now my expectation is that when i will going to start my application so i can see this clients uh, in our database so let's do that so now let's go here so now let's run this command and here you can see so we have one record related to our uh, public client so we will going to use this public client so it is very very easy so for uh, for uh, persisting uh, client information so now let's move further this is just the one step so in next step we will going to use uh, so if you recall uh, that uh, when we in previous lectures when we learn about uh, authorization so we need to also store the consent so here consent is still being still is being used uh, in memory uh, storage so let's do one thing so let me search just uh, one minute here we have this okay so here i have this consent file so now let's grab this so inside your flyway migration so here i need to create another file i cannot now change the existing one because that migration is already applied so here before choosing the name i need to see the previous version previous version was v1 so i need to pick the next higher number v2 two time underscore underscore and after that i can write the name of name of this file so create consent table dot sql so here let's paste it so now let's start our application so flyway will automatically going to apply these tables to our database so it's very very awesome so lots of the work flyway is doing for us so now if you see we have this consent so if you recall when when we perform our first step when we request for the code 
so at that time we will we need to provide the consent also if we provide the consent so that record will going to be percent persist in this table i will going to show that also so this is also done so now let's stop so now if you recall like in first video we will learn about uh, users informations also so we have uh, stored client information we have stored consent information so now let's move for the user so user will going to be there is a uh, one file if i recall users.dll yes what happened users.dll okay so these are the users file let's grab these file so inside migration I need to create a v3 version sorry v3 underscore and create users table dot equal so here I need to paste it so all is good let's remove this I don't need index or anything just give me one minute only let me format it and here i will going to size 200 yeah and this is authorization table so similarly here it's a 200 yeah this is all so now let's start our server so now this time we will able to see users and authorities table also so now let's see slash dt and here you can see we have a user table and authority table so if i select this table so i will not going to see anything users and it's a empty so now let's insert some data because if you see if you see our uh, security config so here we have inserted some uh, in memory database uh, in memory user so now we can use our table for this purpose so now let's move okay so if we go here users details and here we have users uh, gdbc user detail manager so let's use this JDBC use JDBC users detail manager. If you want to use like a users details here, you can do that because user detail is interface. This is the implementation, so no need to be worried. And here it it's need a data source. So let's grab this, and here we need to inject the bean of data source, and here we can pass. And I cannot add user here because uh, every time we will going to start application it will going to be add so this is not something related to our application so we have some test file in it data so we will going to use this file here so here this uh, let's do one thing i need a uh, i need here user tail manager yes so first things i will going to use if users detail manager is user exist and name of my user is user and if if this user is not exist then create and user detail manager start uh, i think it's a create user yeah it should be user so all done so now if i start my application i will able to see the user inside a user table let's verify that so let's rerun so here you can see i have a user 
so basically if you see we are using no operations uh, password pa uh, password encoder so i think this is no operation password encoder but i don't know why it is using like a big crypt but we will able to use uh, with a plain password so it it's not like a, it's encoded or something in in my knowledge because i i have not defined any okay so with the default uh, password encoder i think default is big crypt Okay, I think it is using password encoder and default is bcrypt. Yeah, it's good. So if you want to be very specific, you can define a password encoder bean also. You are free to do that. But I will not going to do that. I just skip. It's very. Uh, this is all related to Spring security basic core versions. So we all know that. So this is all. I think. Okay one more important things we forgot so now we have stored client uh, client information consent information now we have a user information the most important two thing is still left so first is if you remember i in previous lectures i explained about the authorization codes and when we say when we send code challenge cones code verifier all this information is all this information will going to be stored by the authorization server also so we need to persist that information also so before that if you see like uh, if i start my application now i will show you so application is started so if i try to log in like this and here i can pass user and password is password and here you can see i i i already logged in right so so let's expose one endpoint also so that I can show you clearly. So let's create a controller package. So I just need a very strings and that's or we can do one thing let's use security content holder get contacts and get authentications and principles dot to string okay so now just expose it or yeah so now is all let's start this time so if i go here so let's log in so user and password okay so now if you see i am able to see this all informations because i am returning from endpoints okay so i am able to use this endpoint just suppose if i stop this because i created the session when i start when i stop my applications and start my application so all the session was stored in memory all everything is got destroyed so now if you just try to open this it will again going to ask for the login so just assume in real environment we will not going to use the one instance of our application we will going to learn we will going to start n number of uh, instance of our authorization server just suppose we logged in corresponding to one uh, instance and second time we will going to fetch user information from the second instance so we created session on one instance so that sessions need to be uh, shared among all the instance which we are going to rerun so now let's see how to store that session so i hope it's clear for you i have not explained in much detail because this is all related to uh, security core uh, basic concept please let me know in comments if you need a uh, details video about uh, uh, spring security then i will i will create a one and we will i will explain everything providers managers filters how all, all these things work so now let's create session before creating a session there is one library we need to use jdbc uh, spring session something like that let me check one minute so there is one library 
so I will go into copy paste so here yeah so spring boot I think is a spring sessions dot session hyphen jdbc and this is under this session group okay so now let's refresh our dependency so now we have this uh, dependency this dependency will going to be handle everything related to storing sessions and everything now we just need to create a tables and let's use this or, or I can do one thing so in external dependency so let's find out this session dependency okay here so here let's open it so if you open this so there must be uh, one schema let me check Postgres equal. Let's open this. Yeah. So here we have this schema. So we need a session table and also we need an attribute table. So basically, in this attribute, it will going to store all the uh, every time we will going to create the sessions, uh, session related attributes. I, I will explain to this. So let's grab this table and what one more thing also just one minute. okay so now here let's create a new file version 4 underscore underscore session table dot equal so now let's open this but there is a one uh, catch so basically if i use this uh, dependency as it is it will not going to be work because during uh, serialization so this uh, it will going to fail for this care so i need to use the character but i don't know like a why spring put this under the sequels if you see like a in a schema that file name was uh, mentioned with the sequels right post sequel if you see but it didn't work with the post sequels i have already verified this thing so we need to use we need to use here character this is the first thing let's replace everywhere this yes i think there is no more cap okay so we are done so this is all we need to do so now let's start our application when we add a dependency that dependency will going to configure all the default settings and everything so now let's go here so slash dt so this time you will going to see this is spring sessions and spring session attribute so now let's log in so user and password what's happened user and password okay so now we have logged in so now if we see inside our this table select star from this spring session so you will able to see this all information now let's see what is being stored in this table also so back to start from this okay I think we cannot read it so let's enable extended mode so now I need to run it so here you can see it's stored like a spring security contacts so I okay in my knowledge I can be like a wrong so whenever we set the spring security contacts so at that time I think it's uh, insert the record in this uh, session attributes for like a for preparing the secu uh, spring security contacts and storing inside the spring security contacts this is my understanding so now let's do one thing now if you see we are logged in okay so now let's stop this server 
and if I start my server, let's wait. Yes, it started. So now if I go here and if I refresh this, so it will not going to show me this uh, login page because my session is already persisted on the backend side. That's why I am able to log in. So if I do one thing, slash tt. Okay, so inside this session, if I delete everything from this, delete from session. What's happened? Everything is deleted and let's clear attributes also. Delete this. Deleted. Okay. So now let's do one thing. Stop it and run this. Even I don't need to stop. So if we refresh here, so you can see it asking for me login because we deleted the session. So user again need to create the sessions by authentic, uh, author authenticating itself against our server. So I hope you find this uh, interesting. This is very good. And I really encourage you to debug, uh, explore more on this sessions uh, dependency which we have included, what we can configure and what is the default config because it's always very, very uh, necessary to know the default configs also. It is not like that. We just put and start working. So we need to know all in and out also. So now let's do one thing. You maybe found out this very, very simple like just put this and it started because uh, if you see like for founding this cat to character it took me so much time so i already just uh, prepared this whole video so it seems to very very straightforward and but it, it it was not yeah so now let's move to this let's just have one minute there is another table also yes So if I go here, so if you see, we have another table also this one. So we need to we need to create these tables also. This is the last table and it will going to be very, very important also because this is the table basically controls everything related to the flow of authorization. So now let's grab this table and now let's create it. So name this as uh, version 5 underscore underscore two time underscore authorization dot table dot sql and this table is very very important even to understand the complete flows and everything so here if you see we are using this uh where is blob yeah so wherever we are using this blob, we need to replace this with a text. So let's do that because in Postgre there is no blob. So let me check. It is dark. Yeah. So now replace all. So now let's do one thing. So we uh, just replace this. So now we also need to uh, configure our bean also. So if you remember for authorization server, I have not uh, created anything. So this is our bean OAuth, uh, OAuth to authorization server. So let's open this. So we will see OAuth to authorization server. is only just a one minute so public o or let's go so if we see here registers client principles and all this okay 
okay it just uh, two or two okay this service or two authorization service so we need to create the bean for this if i go inside this so it's an interface so if i see here so we were using in memory authorizations and it's created by default so now now we need to use gdbc authorization server service okay so here now let's return new gdbc uh, authorization service and we are done and here if we see what this need okay so it's need uh, these two dependency let's grab let's take it both and paste it here and here we need to pass gdbc operations and registers client repository and we need to register this as a bean so this is last step basically it's not last step there is few more uh, config we also need to do that so now let's start Uh, our application is started so please ignore this uh, issue this is known issue so i need to invest more time for understanding this thing but it will not going to uh, create any problem for our flow so now let's do one thing so let's verify this table also slash detail so now if you see we have oauth to authorizations table so in this table we don't have anything so select this from this so it's empty so now let's do one thing service is started so let's try to replicate this our flow again so i need to grab this so if you are wondering what is it so please i really encourage you to see my first video where i have explained everything in very very detail so now let's this what's happen okay so here it will give me this uh, code because i already logged in now we have a persist session even if i start it will not going to kick off that login page so now if you see i have a code this code so now let's see in our table what information we have so this is the step so we just requested for the code now we have a code but we have not exchanged this code for the access token so now let's see during this step what informations our server is stored so now i need my table name this one okay it's very very huge data so now if you see so okay so now if you see like it's id and this is uh, our client id so basically it's store okay for this client and this was the user and this was the flow user was requested and this was the scope user is requested and these are like attributes so now let's see what is in this attribute okay simple grant authorities users role role underscore users okay for this information if you see like a authorized uri related the users and where is store authorization code value okay this is the codes like uh, it's shared with us so if i use this code it will going to mark this code is used so second time we cannot use this code so now if you see this is the same code jx okay sorry jx so after that code issue this time code will expire at this time uh, about a code metadata invalidated false okay this code is still validated it's not invalidated we got this but against this code there is no access tokens and no refresh tokens nothing everything is empty in my knowledge so now let's do and here if you see this is state is used for csrf uh, attack so if i pass over this state it will going to store when i when i will going to trade that code for the access token at that time it will going to be validated for for to avoid csrf attack 
uh, I, I have a plan to cover this in very much detail for now just uh, ignore this so now let's trade so now let's grab this code and this is the request so here I need to replace this this is the code and let's issue this request so here you can see I got this token so this token and with 64 G so now if I go here now again select so now if you see so this was now we see like what thing is changed okay this is a uh, code related information so let's move further okay so this is the access token which uh, which issue against this token okay access token expiry date and when we going to uh, issue that request like a, a logout request or something so it will basically going to delete access token from here so basically access to uh, all jw token these are like a stateless token there is no persist records or something but here if you see like a uh, authorization server is configured in such a way even you you can log out it just like defying the jwt basic uh, idea I, I don't know why it is like this but this is how it is and oidc is connection sorry oidc id and token id this is all we have so for every token if you see we have a metadata it just information is valid or not but let's see for the code so now code should not be valid so this was the code and where we have code metadata okay here okay so if you see now this code is invalid invalidated so if i try to use this code it will not going to work it will not going to give me any access tokens or anything because we already trade for this token so i hope now this things uh, more clear to you because in previous lecture we were not able to see all these things because it was all being stored in memories now we have a persist data so even if i start my applications and uh, again restart every authentication will going to be work as it is because everything is persist so in next lectures i will going to explore more or also like a, i will going to use like a dockers and kubernetes and we will going to start multiple instances of our, our applications and we will going to use the gateway so through that i will going to simulate the real environment where a uh, we got token from one instance and we used uh, against the another instance so i will going to show this is how we can use this uh, durable state for uh, 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 passing data among all the instances so this is almost completed for a durability perspective i need to cover this jwks uh, uh, source also because it is still in memory if i start to instance it will going to be fail it will not going to be work because this query this uh, sorry uh, J JWKS uh, uh, RSA uh, keys is 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 in is still in memory. There is a no way. Uh, currently, we have implemented sharing among instances. So in next lectures, I will going to cover this, and after that, our server will like a very close to the productions, like a most of the basic functionality like we have uh, implemented. So if you watched uh, till now so i really encourage you if you have not if you have not yet uh, subscribed and like my video please do that and stay tuned for the next video and i really appreciate you able to watch till the ends i hope you got uh, some uh, very very uh, meaningful and important informations thank you